Okay. Welcome back, everybody. This is CSIS 3020 Web Programming and Design. This is the second video lecture of the first week. <coughs> Does anybody still have problems logging in? Cool. Okay. Any questions about the wiki? All right. I suppose everybody already downloaded Dytil's textbook. It's a PDF. When you open it up, I need you to read for next week the first, I think it's five chapters. The first one is, what's the internet, and stuff like that, you know. Uh, I think HTML is the third. Let me quickly get the book. HTML. This is the fourth edition. Let's go through the software that you guys are going to need for this class. <coughs> All right, so this guy came up. Introduction to computers and the internet, web browser basics, dive into web 2.0. You can skip one and two. If you don't really know about browsers and stuff, you can read it. I need you to skim over web 2.0 and what that means. At this point, you guys should already know what a web 1.0 or a web 2.0 means. In fact, you should have already experienced it. But if you, you think you need a little bit more uh, review on it, go ahead. But what I need you to read is chapter 4 and 5 for next week. Okay? So 1 through 5. One through five. Especially for and five. Okay. <clears throat> there will be a ninety question quiz on it. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> As you guys can see, I have a 2007 laptop, okay? So you don't need a really sophisticated laptop for your software, this software to run. This is a Windows XP machine, 32-bit, okay? It has just two microprocessors, and I think it only has two gigs of memory, the software that you need will run here fine. In fact, I think it will run better on Windows XP than on Windows 7. Some of you might run into problems when you download and install this software or try to install the software on a Windows 7 due to the security administrator rights, this, that, or the other. My suggestion is just install Windows XP on a virtual machine. If you guys have a recent laptop, most probably has 4 to 8 microprocessors and 8 gigs of memory, 4 gigs at a minimum, uh, you can install Windows XP 
very easily. In fact, as students, NOAA students, you guys have access to a free copy of Windows XP. And where is that? My internet went somewhere. This is the wrong one. Yes. So if you guys go to E to the Dream Spark website for the academic institutions and register as a NOVA student you guys have for free access to all the software 21 operating systems 59 developer tools 60 servers blah 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 blah, blah. one of which is Windows XP Okay. Now I don't expect you to destroy your current laptop by installing Windows XP. So you're going to need a virtual machine. To create a virtual machine, you can use either one of two tools. You can use virtual box Okay, this one probably, if you're running Windows. And inside VirtualBox, you will install your Windows XP that you downloaded from DreamSpark. So within the same machine, I'm sorry? Yes, okay, good point. But keep in mind, you need to sign in, right? which means you need to register. This is the link. Don't I have it here somewhere? I'll be gone. I don't. Okay. I will do that right now. So I'm going to add a URL to the Dream Spark so you guys can download the software. What is it called? Microsoft Dream Spark. It's a logo. have it now. And in fact, I need you to do that first. Okay. And I was saying, you can install this Windows XP inside this VirtualBox. So you have to download VirtualBox and run it install it on your Windows 7, Windows 8, whatever. 
okay and then install the Windows XP that you downloaded from DreamSpark into VirtualBox or you can go to Parker128 and the students that work in that lab will actually help you with the VMware tools VMware is another company, but this one is not for free, but we get it for free as an educational institution. <coughs> we get the workstation. Where is that? All the way in the bottom. Workstation. VMware workstation. That's the equivalent to VirtualBox. Right? So VirtualBox is the free workstation. Well, it's workstation free too? No. For Windows. And then in there you will install the Windows XP. So the end goal is for you guys to have the exact same operating system and development environment that I will be having in your class. Okay? I could have picked an Apple or a Linux or whatever, but hey, it's Windows XP. Alright? You want to do something else? You're on your own. What else are we going to need other than Windows XP and a virtual machine? We are going to need an interactive development environment. And you, most of you more, most probably are already familiar with this one. Also called an editor, a programming editor tool. Eclipse.org. That's the one that I'm going to be using. You guys can go into the Eclipse.org website and download the one that download any version that you want. But I'm going to be using this one. Eclipse for PHP developers. It's Helios which is ah before Indigo, before Juno, before Klep Kepler. So it's like three or four versions old, but it works. Okay? You don't need anything more sophisticated than that. Okay. What else are you going to need? You are going to need a web server. A web server is a piece of software that you install in a computer and your computer becomes a web server meaning it will provide whoever calls it a web page. Okay? And the one that we're going to be using it's going to be Apache. Apache Software Foundation. It's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, software foundation of open source software that is out there. They have created literally hundreds of projects from editors, web servers, you name it, any kind of library, 
platform framework that you can imagine. And you can go there and look at all the different projects that have grown so much that each individual project has its own website. But you can see <laughs> all the different projects I don't know, by alphabetical order, categories, whatever. Each one of these is an Apache Software Foundation project. Literally, a group of developers anywhere around the world that got together and say, I have an idea. Let's do it. And on their own time, they created it. Okay? One of them projects probably one of the first projects from the Apache Software Foundation is the Apache Web Server, also called the HTTP Server Project. Okay? If you go if you guys do a Google very quickly, which one is the most mostly use web server among all the websites in the world the entire internet most probably it will tell you that this guy the Apache server is the, mo the one of the mostly used ones so almost more than 50 percent of the websites out there that you guys hit on a daily basis will be served by an Apache server. So I want you guys to learn to download, install, and use the Apache server. Okay? So that's what you're going to be using. You can download any version that you want, but I'm going to be using are you? Two point two point twenty one for Windows thirty two. Windows XP thirty two bit version. This is the Apache version installation file that is used on for my project. It's an MSI so it will install as a service. Okay. What other piece of software are you going to need? You're going to need a database server. This is the guy, the piece of software that when you install on your computer, your computer becomes a database server. In other words, it will respond to queries against the database. Okay. And I will be using MySQL. MySQL used to be open source, and then Oracle bought it, and it's still sort of, kind of, even though it's a direct competitor to Oracle, sort of, kind of, open source, at least the community server. Okay, that's the database server that I'm going to be using in the website. You can download any version that you want, but I'm going to be using the MySQL 5.5.16 for Windows 32-bit. Got it? What other piece of software are you going to need? And this is all open source. <coughs> Which means you guys will f be able to freely download it. You will find documentation online for any issues that you might have. Installing it, running it, whatever. 
and it will most probably be used at places where you're going to be working at when you graduate. So it's very important to know these pieces of software. The other one is the PHP interpreter. So we need to we need to add an interpreter to our Apache web server. Remember the Apache web server is the guy that knows about web pages and stuff. We're going to need to add a functionality to our Apache web server so that it knows how to interpret PHP code. Okay? Because that's the language that we're going to be learning. That's the server-side scripting language that we're going to be learning in this class. You can download any version that you want, but this is the version that I'm going to be using. PHP 5.2.17 for Windows 32 bit machine. You don't have to download all this stuff for next week, obviously. So what do you need for next week? You need a machine with Eclipse running. Okay? At a bare minimum. Hopefully a Windows XP machine with Eclipse running. With the software that I providing running. Any questions so far? I need you guys to go into your profiles and edit it if you haven't done so already. Put up an image or an avatar, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay? Edit your profile. What else? Okay, this is one more thing. As part of the downloads, the software downloads, you will find the Ditel's textbook source code. This book will provide plenty of examples of HTML, of cascading style sheets, of JavaScript, of this, that, and the other. I don't expect you to type it from scratch obviously and maybe the first few chapters is not the case here it is HTML for instance look at this one this is an HTML page I don't expect you to type all this stuff so in Moodle you will find Ditel's textbook source code per chapter you will find every single piece of code HTML, Cascading Starship, JavaScript code that you can just copy and paste in your Eclipse okay the idea is for you guys to not be afraid of this stuff just copy it download it, paste it in your Eclipse and try to run it and I'm going to be doing some of that here, but I'm not going to be able to do every single example from the book, obviously. So I'm going to leave that work to you guys. Okay? If you guys go into the HTML tags, that's what you guys are going to need to learn Okay, look at this. Look at this section. Okay, each one of these on the left is an HTML tag.
there is no way that I'm going to be able to cover the syntax and the purpose of every single one of those tags in class. It's up to you guys to learn. What is an area tag? So you go and read about it and you try yourself. This is a pretty cool website because this website will show you the code and you can actually modify the code live and you can see the effect of that code. So I suggest that you guys, whenever you can, go into w3schools.com and take a look at the HTML. They teach other stuff as well, okay? But take a look at the HTML. It has really cool samples. What is a table? Go and it will describe what a table tag looks like, and you can try it yourself. This is the code, this is the result. Okay, you modify the code, you see the result. Got it? Okay, I will try to cover as much as I can, obviously. But like I said, there's a lot of reading that you're going to have to do on your own. Are there any questions? Yes. Say that again. Yeah, if you expand, if you download this file, the question is, do I have to type or copy and paste this stuff? If you download this zip and unzip it, you will find all the code in chapters. So chapter 1, all the code. Chapter 2, all the code, etc. Well, those, those chapters probably won't have any code. But chapter 5, for instance. And I believe I have it somewhere in here. Yep, chapter 5, or 4. You open chapter 4, and you will see... The, what figure is this? This is figure 4.13. You will see a folder called figure 4.13. And you actually can go ahead and edit it. It's an HTML page, right? So they actually put all this stuff... They put all this stuff into one file with an extension HTML because that's where it makes sense, right? And you can... Oh, by the way, that's this is another really cool editor that I use, and you guys are welcome to download and install as well. Notepad++. So this is it. This is the code being referenced in Chapter 4, Figure 4.13 and you have it available here. Now you can copy and paste, you can copy all this stuff and paste it in Eclipse, or you can drag the file and put it in Eclipse and you have it. You don't have to type one single line of code. Okay? You want to render this uh, HTML, you just double click on it and if you have HTML associated to a browser, it will load in a browser, your default browser. Here it is. This is what that HTML page renders. Okay? And starting next week, I'm going to be covering the most important tags, one by one, reviewing them, what they're for, etc. Showing you examples. And we're also going to be covering cascading style sheets. So that's the reason why I need you guys to read Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 from the book. Be ready and prepare. So, what's for next week? Think about a theme, title, problem statement. Put it in, in writing, send it to me via IM hopefully, or email. 
I'll reply, yes, looks good, doesn't look good, modify it, whatever. When I approve it, put it in the wiki. I need to see the problem statement page in the wiki. I need to see that you guys are already working on the wiki. Read chapters 4 and 5 and be ready for next week. Download Eclipse. If you want to work on the same development environment that I'm working on, make sure you download VirtualBox or go to Parker Building Lab and those guys will help you install VMware. Download Windows XP and install it. Got it? Any questions? All right, guys. I hope you have a lot of fun and you learn a lot in this class. See you next week.